Module 7. I am Ryan of ZenFX, and this is a continuation of the last module, Module 6, where we're going to build off of our candlesticks and start looking at candlestick patterns and how we can use them in our technical analysis. So, again, everything we talk about today is strictly for educational purposes only, and please be aware that Forex does carry inherent risk. All right, let's talk about our basic candlestick patterns. Now, we have four different types of basic candlestick patterns. We have our basic, which is going to be uh, our single our single candlesticks. And then we have our single candlestick patterns, our double candlestick patterns, and our triple candlestick patterns. And I'll explain what I mean in just a second. So. Let's talk about our basic candlesticks first. The first one we want to talk about is the spinning top. Okay? Now, spinning top candlesticks come with a long upper wick, a long lower wick, and small bodies. The color of the body, not important. Okay? Now, the pattern indicates indecision between buyers and sellers. Okay? It's kind of like a stalemate. Not not exactly as much of a stalemate as a doji, which we'll talk about in a second. So we still had a little bit of movement in a direction, whether it be buying or selling, but for the most part, it was about a draw. So small body, whether it be bullish or bearish, shows little movement from open to close, and the wicks indicate that both the buyers and the sellers were fighting it out, but nobody could really get traction. Nobody could really gain the upper hand. So even though the session opened and closed with, you know, very little change, prices moved significantly higher and or lower in the meantime. Neither buyers nor sellers could gain the upper hand, and the result was, you know, basically a standoff. So what do we want to take away from spinning tops? Well, we want to acknowledge that this basic candlestick indicates indecision. Okay. If you see one form during an uptrend, it usually means there aren't many buyers left and they could be running out of steam, so there's a possible reversal uh, direction. You know, there could possibly be a reversal in direction soon. And if it forms during a downtrend, then it also means that there's not very many sellers left in the market and you could look to see an uptrend forming. All right. Let's look at our next one, our Maribozu. Okay just basically big long wickless candle. So a maribozu means there are no wicks from the bodies and depending on whether the candlestick's body is green or red, the high and the low are the same as it's open or close. Okay? So the low and the open are the exact same and the close and the high are also the exact same as you can see here in these two pictures. Now if it's a bullish candle, it shows that buyers were completely in control of the entire session. And this usually becomes the first part of a bullish continuation or a bullish reversal. Okay. Now, the same is for a red candle. It just shows that sellers were completely in control that entire time. I mean, the buyers didn't come into the picture at all. And this, again, could signal a the start of a... Uh, bearish continuation or of a bearish reversal. Next one we're going to look at is the doji. Okay, now, as I mentioned earlier, similar to the spinning top, just absolute indecision in this market. Now we had movement, but it closed in the exact same place that it opened. Either that or the bodies are extremely, extremely short. Okay, so Usually, the trademark of a doji is that it has a very, very small body that just appears as a thin line. Now, dojis suggest indecision or a struggle between the buyers and the sellers. Prices move above and below, creating the wicks, right? But they close, like I said, at basically the open. So neither buyers nor sellers are able to gain control, and as a result, it's basically a draw. So there's four general types of doji candlesticks as we see here and the length of the upper and lower wicks can vary 
and the resulting candlestick can look like either a cross or an inverted cross or a plus sign if you want to think of it that way and a uh, fun fact doji is both singular and plural you can have a doji or many doji so so the four basic ones that we have are just your standard doji then we have a long-legged doji which means that there was a big push by buyers or sellers and then a big push in the opposite direction and then they settled right back in the middle okay. uh, second one is a dragonfly doji and that means there was a huge push by sellers and then it got pushed back up and closed with no buyers ga gaining control and the gravestone doji absolute opposite huge push up by the buyers and then the sellers came in and squashed it completely and uh, finished off at the open okay so keep note of these when you see indecision in the market it means basically that you know just that that the market is in a state of flux and it's in a potential reversal or thinking of continuing it just doesn't have the pressure from either the buyers or sellers at that time it could be a, a pause or the market taking a breather all right let's talk about our single patterns okay so we looked at the basic now let's talk about our single patterns okay now here's four basic single patterns and what they mean the first is going to be the hammer and the hanging man now these are basically the exact same candle it just depends on whether they're in a downtrend or an uptrend or whether they're coming up against support or resistance right? so the hammer is a bullish reversal pattern that forms during a downtrend okay the the name is thought to have come from the market hammering out a bottom if you want to think of it that way because it's coming up against support a hammer will always be against support so when price is falling a hammer is a signal that the bottom is near and that price is going to start rising fairly soon the longer the lower wick indicates that sellers pushed price lower but buyers were able to overcome this and push price back up to close to where the opening was now just because you see a hammer forming a downtrend doesn't mean that it, you know it's automatically uh, a reversal point uh, you're going to need more bullish confirmation before you want to enter a long trade but it is a good signal that it's possibly forming so a typical confirmation would be to wait for um, another bullish candle to close above the open right after the hammer and then you might be in a good position to, to take a long trade so what are the criteria for recognizing a hammer there's going to be a long wick about two or three times the size of the actual body right little or no upper wick now the the body itself is going to be at the upper end here obviously of that range you see that and the color of the body is not important it can be either bullish or bearish green or red like it can be either of these what matters is is it at the bottom of a downtrend and hitting support or is it at the top of an uptrend and hitting resistance that's what's going to make the difference between whether it's a hammer or whether it's a hanging man okay so when price is rising that's when we see the hanging man and that indicates that sellers are beginning to outnumber buyers a long lower wick shows that sellers pushed price down during the session buyers were able to push price back up but only near the open but it should set off some alarms in your brain telling you that there are no more buyers left to provide the necessary momentum to keep price going up All right so let's talk about what do we look for for hanging man okay kind of the same we're gonna look for a long lower wick with little to no upper wick the body's gonna be close to the top of the uh, trading range and again the color can be either bullish or bearish what matters is is it at the top of an uptrend or not we want it to see we want to see it bouncing or getting rejected off of a resistance level all right next we have our other two single patterns and that's going to be our inverted hammer and our shooting star 
Okay. Now you'll notice these two look identical as well. Again, the only difference is going to be whether you're in a downtrend or an uptrend. The inverted hammer, which we see here on the uh, the left, is a bullish reversal candlestick. That's going to be hitting up against support and looking for a trend reversal into a bullish trend. Now the shooting star is going to be at the top of an uptrend pushing up against resistance and that's going to signal a reversal into a downtrend. Again, both are identical and the the color doesn't matter. Right? It's just whether we're seeing it at the bottom of a downtrend against support or the top of an uptrend against resistance. Okay? So an inverted hammer is going to occur when price has been falling and it suggests that a reversal is possible because the long upper wick shows that buyers you know, tried to push price up higher but that sellers pushed it back down. So fortunately right, the buyers still managed to close the session near the open but since they weren't able to close the price any lower right, this is a good indication that everybody who wants to sell has already sold. So if there's no more sellers left, who's left? The buyers. And that's when we start to see a reversal of trend and a new bullish trend take place. And the opposite is, uh, is for the shooting star. It's a bearish reversal pattern that you know it looks identical to the inverted hammer, but it only occurs at the top of a uptrend. And the shape indicates obviously that price opened at its low, it rallied up, but it got pulled back down to the bottom. So again, we're seeing an insight into the market. We're seeing that buyers attempted to push price up, but sellers came in and pushed price back down. And that's a, definitely a bearish signal that since there's no more buyers left in the market, that they've all been marked. They, they all got killed. Now it just means that there's none left in the market and that sellers are starting to take over so let's look for a bearish trend. Alright, let's look at our double um, our double candlestick patterns. First one we're going to look at are our engulfing candles. So the bullish engulfing pattern is usually a two candlestick pattern that signals a strong move may be coming. Well that's just engulfing candles in general. And it happens when a candle is immediately followed by a larger candle. That's your engulfing candle. It's, it's called that because the second candle engulfs in size the first candle. So when we see it in a bullish trend, right, it happens when we have a bearish candle and it's immediately followed, as we see here, by a bullish engulfing candle. Right? This means that buyers are coming in in full force and that there is a good possibility of a strong move up after maybe a, a recent downtrend or a period of consolidation. And then of course the same is for a bearish engulfing candle. Usually happens during consolidation or at the top of an uptrend and then you see a big push by sellers. You see a lot of sellers coming into the market and a lot of times that's going to be your signal that we're about to start a downtrend. Not always, but it is a good uh, a good heads up or a good warning that a new trend might be coming. Next one we're going to look at as far as doubles are our tweezer tops and our tweezer bottoms. Okay, so named because they look like a pair of tweezers. Now this type of candlestick pattern is usually spotted after an extended uptrend or a downtrend and it's a good indication that a reversal is soon going to occur. Now the most effective tweezers have the characteristics of the first candlestick is the same as the overall trend, like if price is moving up then that first candle should be bullish and then the second candlestick is the opposite trend. If price is moving up then the second candle should be bearish and vice versa. And a big thing is the wicks should be generally of equal or the same length. Okay? And then tweezer tops should have about the same high where tweezer bottoms should have about the same low. So here in this downtrend we see the first candle is bearish, wicks are the same length, and the next candle is bullish, indicating now we're in a bullish trend. And the same over here for bullish turning into bearish. 
Now let's look at our triple patterns. Okay, first one we're gonna look at is a very popular pattern. This is the evening and the morning star. And if I can give you a, a quick bit of advice uh, that helped me memorize the difference between the two when I was first starting out, the evening star is always a setting candle, right? In the evening, the sun sets, it goes down. So your third candle is going down, it's bearish. And in the morning, the sun rises. So in that case, your third candle is rising. It is bullish. Yeah, just something that helped me remember it. Hopefully that'll help you remember it too. So now the morning star and the evening star are triple candlestick patterns that you can usually find at the end of a trend. The first candlestick is a bullish candle, which is part of the recent uptrend. Then the second candle will have a very small body being either a doji or a spinning top, indicating the indecision in the market. And then the third candlestick acts as the confirmation of the reversal. And it has to go at least beyond the middle point of this candle, okay? So if we're if in an evening star formation, this bearish candle has to go past the 50% line of this very first bullish candle. And the same with this morning star, this bullish candle has to go past the 50% or the median line of this bearish candle, okay? Next one are three white soldiers and our three black crows. So a three white soldier pattern is formed when three long bullish candles follow a downtrend signaling a trend reversal. And of course the three black crows is uh, when three bearish candles follow a strong uptrend. Of course indicating again that there is a trend reversal. So the first of the three soldiers is called the reversal candle. If we're looking at the three white soldiers, it either ends the downtrend or applies that the period of consolidation that followed the downtrend is over. For the pattern to be considered valid though, the second candlestick should be bigger than the previous candle's body. So it needs to be at least the same height or larger. Also, the second candlestick should close near the high, leaving a small or non-existent upper wick, okay? We wanna see real small wicks or just maribozu candles. And then for the, third, for the pattern to be complete, this last candlestick should be at least the same size as the second candle or larger and also have no wick, okay? So each candle, each preceding candle for both the three black crows and the three white soldiers needs to be at least as big or larger than the candle that it's following, okay? And let's look at our last third candlestick pattern. We have our three inside up and our three inside down. The three inside up candlestick formation is uh, found at the bottom of a downtrend, as we see right here. We have a large uh, bearish candle. Then our second candle is our reversal candle, followed by a large bullish candle that ends higher than the original candle. Okay, so the things that we need to have for a valid three inside up or three inside down uh, formation, the first candle has to be found at the bottom of either the downtrend or an uptrend and is characterized usually by you know a large marabosu candle the second candle should make its way up um, at least to the midpoint of the first candle okay we want to see this the second candle go at least halfway up the first candle and then the third candlestick like i said needs to close above the high or the low of the first candle okay and this means that either an uptrend or a downtrend has ended and that a new trend is starting. Right? So keep an eye out for these. Obviously here we have a um, three inside up and then it would just be the exact opposite for a three inside down. We'd start off with a strong bullish candle. We'd have a small reversal bearish candle followed up by a second bearish candle closing below the low of that first bullish candle, okay? 
All right, a couple small things to keep in mind uh, when you are trading candlesticks. So if the close is above the open, then a bullish candle is drawn. Obviously, if the close is below the open, then we have a bearish candle. Um, the hollow or filled section of the candlestick is called the body. The thin lines poking above and below are called wicks. The top of the upper wick is the high. The top of the lower wick is the low. Okay, so just quick brush up on candlestick anatomy. Okay, now remember, candlesticks are completely useless on their own, right? I mean, they are good for technical analysis, but you must always consider the market environment and what price is telling you. Candlesticks are best used when used in conjunction with support and resistance levels or trend lines and channels, okay? And just a quick word of caution from the man himself, just because Japanese candlesticks hit at a reversal or continuation, it does not mean it will happen for sure. You must always consider market conditions and what price action is telling you, and that is straight from Steve Neeson himself out of his book, Japanese Candlestick Charting and Analysis, right? So as with any technical indicator or tool, just because it's pointing to a reversal or continuation doesn't mean it's going to happen. The Forex market is not set in stone ever, all right? So make sure you're doing, you're doing your proper technical analysis and uh, your proper proper market analysis so again one of the best things you can do is use candlesticks with support and resistance right because support and resistance levels determine areas where buyers and sellers have set up you know their mental levels looking at how candlesticks react to those levels will much great you know much greatly increase increase your um, your winning percentage when it comes to trying to predict where price will either reverse or continue at. Okay. So, now, there are many types of Japanese candlestick patterns, but obviously as we've seen, they can be categorized into how many bars make up that candlestick pattern, whether they be a single, a dual, or a triple candlestick you know, formation. So, if you want to learn more about Steve Neeson and candlestick um, patterns and analysis, uh, this is just a quick rundown. I mean, this was a very, very quick, quick, brief look at candlesticks. Uh, Steve Neeson teaches three and five day long boot camps on uh, candlestick analysis, and he's written many, many books. So this only just barely scrapes the surface of candlestick analysis. And like I said, if you're interested in learning more, and I highly suggest that you do, please check out uh, one of his books or any of the various resources that we have available in our files section of the ZenFX Telegram channel and Facebook group. Alright guys, that's it for candlestick analysis. Next module, module 8, we will take a look at one of my favorite topics and that is Fibonacci levels. Alright, if you got anything out of this video, please give us a like and a subscribe. We are putting out new videos every day. Please keep an eye out for our advanced price action course, which is going to be coming out very soon. And if you're not already a part of our Telegram channels or our Facebook group, please uh, go check those out after this video is done. We've got a great community of traders and tons of resources just there to help you get better as a trader. All right, I've been Ryan from ZenFX. I'll see you in the next module, and until then, trade well and let's get those pips.